Okay. The spear is the clay of earths, the light of suns, and the formlessness of seed. It is the womb from which the clay of earth extends into the cube-bound heavens to expand into form. And it is the tomb within which all form is voided or re-giving to the heavens as a new form. Every form in nature is either becoming a cube or a sphere, or is a section of either one. Complex bodies are multiples of spheres of matter surrounded by multiples of cubes of space in multiples of wave fields. All crystal shapes are sections of cubes. Their shapes are determined by their position in their wave field. The cubes of space are wave fields which bound all interchanging motion between the two conditions within it. Motion cannot pass through these planes, but can be reflected symmetrically back to or extended symmetrically toward the center of adjoining wave fields. Okay, more heavy language. But you can see here that there's all these different geometric forms. And, and the point is, is that they're not all perfect. They're not all perfectly balanced. They're going through a, uh, a morphogenic resonance. They're going through a change, a transformation. And we just see them certain, certain times we see them, you know, whether they be a mineral or a crystal or a molecule or whatever form they're in. The point is, is that they're always going through this, this movement to become the unique and beautiful shape that they are. Just re-edifying what I was saying earlier, that all of our, our geometric forms are born from the cube and the sphere exchange or the cubic wave field. Within each cube field is the curved universe of two-way light illusion and beyond to the farthest reaches of space. It is repetition of illusion from wave field to wave field at the rate of 186,000 miles per second. That is the speed in which every action reaction anywhere repeats itself everywhere. The illusion of motion gives rise to the belief that light travels. Same thing. Earlier I said that, that light is an illusion and light is actually not traveling, but the cubic waveform is regenerating itself next to itself constantly in stillness. Wave field boundary planes of zero curvature insulate all effects of motion which take place within it from every other wave field. Centering the wave field is the incandescent sphere which mates it. The potential of the entire field is divided equally between its centering sphere of multiplied matter and the surrounding space divided matter. Each mate of each wave field in the universe is balanced with its opposite mate, even to the weight of one electron. The reason why the centering sphere is of high potential and its surrounding space is of low potential is due to the difference in volume. The centering sphere may be a few thousand miles in diameter and its surrounding space many millions of miles in diameter yet they are equal potential for potential but unequal volume for volume okay that's a key point it's basically saying that within the cubic wave field they actually they actually are equally balanced um, in every way except volume Neither one of these mates could sustain its separateness of condition unless it consistently interchanged to give all of itself to the other alternatively in repetitive cycles. Spheres must give to cubes of space by breathing out to discharge themselves and charge space. Space must then re-give to spheres by breathing out from itself to discharge itself and recharge spheres. Each short cycle of interchange is accumulated into a longer life-death cycle in which solids entirely disappear into space and space interchanges its potential to become solids. The principle constitutes the forever inside-out, outside-in turnings of nature by means of which all forms sequentially appear, disappear, and reappear. Well, the way in which I would say this is just look at any body. All bodies are dissolvable. The great Giordano Bruno, hermeticist, basically, prove that with his philosophies. Um, if you look at a body, a human body or the body of an animal or any body, eventually it disappears. Its shell becomes, it disintegrates and whatever it held within itself becomes renewed energy for the greater good. 
And this is what he's saying, is that all bodies dissolve and then reappear in a new, refined, energetic state. The inbreathing of spheres generates low potential into high. The generative process of nature is gravitation. The outbreathing of spheres radiates high potential into low. The degenerative process of nature is radiation. So there you go. Gravitation is generating, radiation is degenerating. It's an energetic exchange of life and death, basically. Multiplication and division are expressed energy into the high and low potential of gravitation and radiation is made possible by the plan of nature which causes all actions of nature to extend radially from omnipresent points of magnetic light. Gravitation pulls spirally inward from within to wind light waves into solids to center space. Radiation thus spirally spirals outward to unwind dense solids into space to surround solids. Each is an equal reaction to the other. Each becomes the other sequentially. So it's good to get this. The point is that gravitation is is constantly pulling energy into itself and creating white light, incandescent light, and creating matter, creating something solid. At the same time, that solid object is constantly breathing out or radiating. Radiation is expressing the death principle of like letting go of energy as it is transformed this whole process we see as motion we see it as life but when it disappears it is it goes back into stillness gravitation is the process or sorry gravitation is the positive electric principle which exerts its pressures centripetally toward the maximum incandescent points of compression in every wave field. It is the father principle of nature, the integrating principle of uphill flow of energy, which forever balances its downward flow. And then you can see the picture here. This is a simple drawing, the mystery of gravitation and radiation. If you just look closely, you can just see that it's, it's not just one spiral, it's two. You have a spiral of white incandescent light being pulled inward towards its center, which is gravitation. And then you also have an, an expression of a thrust away from its center, which is radiation. And that actually expresses itself as darkness. So this is the classic yin-yang, you know, the dark and the light, the balance, the equilibrium. Radiation is the negative electric principle which exerts its pressure centrifugally. How do I say that? Centripetally is gravitation and centrifugally is radiation towards its wave field boundaries planes of magnetic light it is the mother principle of nature the disintegrating principle downhill flow of energy which forever balances its uphill flow there is no center of gravity in nature the centering light of every mass is still magnetic light Likewise, the still axis of every vortex is still magnetic light. Now those are pretty key points to get. This whole cosmology or this whole, this whole uh, uh, Russellian science, you know, you, you kind of have to look at it and, and see that, for one, it's a vortex. Uh, the solar system is a vortex. It's moving. It's not a two-dimensional pancake model like we've been taught. And it's centered by stillness because all motion comes from stillness and then goes back to it. So hopefully that comes through as well. This stillness is called still magnetic light. Radiativity then begins its half cycle from that point of rest and ends it on wave field boundary planes of magnetic light where gravity began. Radiativity then ceases when its motion ceases. Both gravity and radiativity borrow their power to find balance in rest at the journey's end from the points of rest of their beginnings. They each repay their separate borrowings to the other at every point in their respective journeys. Each thus perpetually voids itself by giving to the other. Each At each journey's end, each opposite cancels itself out by giving its all to the other. It is then reborn as the other. Everywhere in nature, each action is its own reaction. And then the quote. 
from the divine Iliad he ends with, death gives to life that life may live, and life gives to death that death may die. All right, so that's as, that's as far as I'm going to go right now. Um, that gives, gives you plenty of stuff to chew on and listen to. Hopefully the language will come through if you listen to this this videos, you know, once or twice, more than once. Once you wrap your mind around the language and understand what Walter Russell is saying, the pictures start to come into place. The magnetic space geometries come into place. So, thank you for listening. Please share.